Uh, well, I will say this, regardless of what happens with the soundtracks, one thing I know I need desperately at this point is a trailer. Mm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like I need a trailer. I was standing uh, next to a series of different Ghostbusters fans in flight suits at uh, Seaside Oddities visiting the Los Angeles Ghostbusters over the weekend. And somebody was like, so how have you been? And I just stopped and looked at them. I was like, I need a trailer. Like, I'm, I'm this is going to sound like I need a fix, but like I, I need something to happen at this point because um, I feel like we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And I get that we're probably going to wait longer for the movie and it's nowhere near the weight of afterlife by any oh, means. For sure. But like, I just, I want to know what the title of this movie is. I don't even, at this point I'm, I'm like, you, just give me like a 15 second title card and something that goes, nah, 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 and I'd be happy. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's just, it's so weird. I think like by no means did, at any point since afterlife came out, did I, you know, lose my hype for, what comes next but i think to some degree on purpose i kind of brain dumped that things were coming next other than whatever they would tell us for the purpose of like i want to be excited but i don't want to be like desperate and so the fact that like it wasn't until maybe i think the last time you and i spoke earlier this month just you know between you and me it, it was like you brought up that like oh a trailer should be coming any time now and I was like, huh? yeah. And then that's when I met, my brain was like, oh, I guess I should think about that because I hadn't yet. And then I realized <laughs> e if this movie was still going to come out in December, then it would be two months away. <laughs> yeah. And even then, yeah. it's coming out in March now. And that's in March, five right. months away. So like we're <laughs> right. in the like half a year window of like, so what's this movie going to look like? And that's right. exciting. And like, because I remember they they had showed like, hey, the, the teaser posters are starting to pop up in theaters. And I remember having the thought of like, oh, that's weird. They must have leaked. That must have been a mistake. I don't know how they ended up in a theater. And then that was like right before you and I spoke. And I was like, oh, wait, no, it makes sense. Oh, we're closing in. <laughs> <in. laughs> I mean, it's weird to think about, but it's like we had our first teaser for Afterlife. Like in <clears throat> January of 2019. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, the plan was not to wait as long as we did for the rest of no, it. No, but. but but even but even then, the original plan was you you tease that movie in January of 2019. Yeah. You release that movie in July of 2020 was the yeah. original plan. So even that far out, they were like, hey, let's have a teaser a solid year and a half before that's, the movie comes that's out. That's going to be kind of like, a record. And I think to some degree that was like a, cause nothing in the teaser was like accurate other than like the tone and the fact that like Ecto was derelict yeah. in a barn. So it was more just kind of like teasing the idea of like, Hey, we're making something new and we're bringing back the old stuff. And right. so, but I do think generally speaking, it, it kind of like for me, the gold standard for like movie marketing, at least in my head that I've always been like, if I ever make a movie like this is the template for like how I want it to hit has been the way Christopher Nolan marketed his Batman movies, because like with yeah. all of them, it was like a year out. You drop a teaser. The first one for Batman Begins came out of nowhere. And like for the whole teaser, you just hear christian bale doing the voiceover about like i've traveled the world i've searched in the shadows my life has been missing something but i've also been haunted something has followed me since i was a child and and i finally figured out what it is and he's like me and then it has like the two little quick flashes <laughs> of batman at the end and i was just like oh, i'm in what is this and uh and so like that was a year out and then it, you know, you get into like the actual trailers and stuff getting closer and it was just like the perfect ramp up, the perfect buildup. And then like for the dark night, that was like the whole viral marketing craze with like, you could go to like in person, I believe in Harvey Dent rallies <laughs> and like people going all over the country, like to different cities and finding these little bits of clues that would unlock like one pixel at a time, the first image of right. the Joker. And it was, and this is before like Heath Ledger passed that. away. So it wasn't <laughs> even just the like, as morbid as it sounds like the hype that came from like, Oh, I got to see Heath Ledger's last movie. Like at this point he was still alive. Everything was fine. And this was just how they were hyping up the movie. 
And so like in that first, like that all happened and it kind of led to that first teaser trailer. And even that first teaser trailer was just like, it was the bat logo and like a Joker playing card. And then right. hearing him laugh for the first time. And then like the date of the movie. And that was a year out. And then they did the same thing with the Dark Knight Rises with the the teaser for right. that one. And that, to me, that's just like, that's it. That's the gold standard of movie marketing. <laughs> like maybe that wouldn't work for something like a comedy where you only need a few months to be like, hey, it's a comedy with these people and right. blah, blah, blah. But when you're doing right. something that's like there's a fan base for this and there's an expectation, it's like, this is what you do. And to me, it, like it plays on that rule of like something is only as as important as you make it. And like Christopher Nolan yeah. showed us with each one of those movies, like, hey, this is important. And I was like, you know what? I right. believe you. Yeah. I don't know. This is not to criticize and be like, we should have had an entire marketing campaign that was <laughs> no, longer term. No, 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 this no. Movie. not at all. Not at all. But. You know, I just I don't know. To me, I'm kind of in the mindset that I want to see a trailer already because I just I mean, part of me. I just want to know if this movie's really called Firehouse. Yeah, I've, I've sure. joked that like I feel like half the reason they haven't gotten to a trailer yet is they're going to be like, surprise. Yeah, I just think it'd be funny if they turned around and said, surprise, we just we, we duped you the entire time. The actual movie is actually called Ghostbusters Firehouse. But that's <laughs> I mean, I'd be fine. Like, I'm not going to feel let down if like we get to the end of the trailer and the title fades in and it is just Firehouse. I'll be like, yeah, sweet. OK, cool. There probably are going to be people who are like, what? Because they're always <laughs> are. But there's going to be people who are very upset who are like, I thought it was Ghostbusters Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, man. I that do. feels like it was so long ago. It feels like, like, it was like that, yeah. forever ago. Like I said, I, I feel like there's been a part of me that's just like, you know what? I'm going to be excited for everything they share, but kind of brain dump it. So like, I'm not just feeling like oh my god i'm waiting to like i, I didn't want to feel like i was just desperate for anything but like you yeah. saying that right now like hey remember hell's kitchen i was just like oh man it has been a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean this is why i'm like i need something else to happen because um i'm now you know ruminating back over hell's kitchen jokes and things and i'm like i need new <laughs> stuff come on show me something yeah. that's coming so i can talk about it as opposed to being like let's rehash the hell's kitchen nonsense i'm excited but, yeah, no i mean i don't know i'm very i'm very excited about it and i'm i think that we're gonna hopefully see something i i want to say I'm, i don't know anything i have no I have no clue about anybody's business whatsoever but just to me i feel like you got to do something by the end of october if the movie's coming out in march like we got to get like a trailer also a missed like, opportunity i mean like and and you and i have talked about this before like as much as Ghostbusters has always been a big enough brand to warrant like a, uh, a summer release alongside other big tentpole movies or even like a Christmas release, if they wanted to do that, there's like, you can't deny that there's like an inherent tie between Ghostbusters and Halloween, not even just because like Sam Hain, but it's like, it's Ghostbusters and then it's Halloween yeah, it's stuff. Like you could so easily, even if you didn't want a movie or something to come out for Halloween, it's like, especially right now with when this movie's supposed to come out, it would be perfect timing to be like, boom, as you're in the Halloween mood, have a trailer for the yeah. next Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. Like, and it doesn't mean it has to come out now. It just means, I mean, it's obviously it's not coming out yeah. now, but yeah. like, you know, I, I think oh. you're right. I would like to, I hope that they can sort of leverage that. And you know, there's like stuff going on with Ghostbusters spirits unleashed at the same yeah. time. Like they've got, you know, another DS DLC presumably coming this month because they've told us that Sam Hain is in it and they decorated the firehouse back to be like, you know, uh, Halloween again. Think about like you've got proton packs and uniforms and all that kind of stuff at Spirit Halloween right now. Think about you if they if they dropped a trailer in the next week or so, like anytime before Halloween, you know how many people would suddenly realize like man, I want to be a Ghostbuster. Let's go see if they got any more of those packs at the Halloween store. <laughs> like, immediate sold out. The answer is no. They're gone. <laughs> <laughs> but they're currently being speculated yeah, on eBay for yeah, $300 a true. pop. God. But And which, to be fair, I mean, I, I actually I, I actually looked last night because I was curious to see what the Spirit Halloween inventory was like on Proton Packs. And the life-size pack is long gone. Um, I don't know if you'll see it again before the end of the Halloween season, but the 80% size pack is still out there. 
I have an 80% one. I've thought about popping into like the few spirits around me just to see if any of them had the life size one. Um, but yeah, I figured it'd be a I saw long the beginning shot. of the season. The very beginning of the season when they first opened, I saw it in a couple stores, but um, I haven't really seen it since. And I have seen ghost traps nowhere. I've said this last week <laughs> in the podcast that I have not seen a single ghost trap at a spirit Halloween. And it makes me wonder if they are still making them. They still have them mm-hmm. on the website, I think. Maybe they no, they bought all of them for afterlife. Them remember, that's what Egon buried that's in true. his front yard. <laughs> yeah, that's where they all went. And then, and then Spirit was like, we can't make any more because, you know, now they're a um, they're a movie prop. <laughs> <laughs> they're an official movie prop. We can't make any more. Sorry. Oh, man. I still have my uh, my Maddie collector trap that I'm very happy with. Oh, yeah. That's the bestest thing ever. Love that thing. That's like uh, probably the best Ghostbusters prop. Yeah. Was I don't know. It's, I, now I got to be careful about that. The Haslab pack is pretty good. Sure. But, sure. Yeah. You know, um, that, that, that trap best. though is definitely something I still covet. Yeah. The trap more than I do the, 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 uh, proton pack. I also think it's kind of funny. Um, I, when I saw a whole bunch of people dressed in ghostbusters this weekend, I could immediately identify the Haslab packs <laughs> <laughs> like, cause they all have the same, like all the same stuff They're on identical. them and they all kind of yeah. have the same position. They're all identical. And so, which is not to slag on them, which is no, not to be like, oh, no, those pro, those people that has that packs, but let's be, let's be honest. Most proton packs look identical. <laughs> yeah, I need to say this too. I, I want to say this before I even like anybody mischaracterizes this. I am a person who doesn't give a shit about your screen accuracy, really. Um, I'm just that's not where but I roll Jim, from. What so are you doing? Like, My blasphemy is rubbing off. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's believe me, it's been this way for a long time because <laughs> I had an 80% sized spirit pack with a Maddie wand on it. And, you know, I, I'm I'm not inclined to be like, hey, you have to have a this version or that version of a thing to be legitimate. I, I, oh, do, no. I do think it's weird when people show up like, you know, in a Ghostbusters Halloween costume at a con. I'm like, eh, it's kind of phoning it in. But yeah, <laughs> like, you know, but beyond that, like if you're if you're doing anything with props or taking something from spirit Halloween and reworking it like good for you. That's awesome. As as long as whatever version of a pack or a trap or whatever it is you have, if you have it and it makes you feel like a ghostbuster or or fills whatever need you have to have that thing, then you're good. That's all that matters. And you're great. If you want to upgrade it, if you want to, if you want to change it to something else, if you want to add to it, if you want to build a better one or buy a better one, like, yeah, that is totally like, the ball's in your court. You shouldn't feel like you have to to be accepted or validated or recognized or anything. No, not not any more than like a person who, uh, you know, buys a lightsaber prop and buy, and there are, you know, multiple people who bought it from the same supplier. And oh, yeah. my God, your lightsaber looks just like that other guy's lightsaber because they both came from the same place. You're <laughs> terrible now. How bad are you? No, I mean, I just think it's kind of funny because. I think other than the spirit pack, it's the first time I can remember seeing that many proton packs that were identical together. Right. Because if you really think about it, it's like they released 20,000 proton packs that are all the same. And <laughs> the yeah. exception of maybe some weathering paints. <laughs> so it's like other than the spirits pack, you would never see full size packs like you, like the even the full the, the spirit pack that's full size is relative is newer than the Haslab pack. Right. So yeah. it's like you would never see everyone who has identical packs with full size. So to see like four people lined up together with full size packs just made my brain go. Why did those? Oh, has lab. That's why they all that's, that's the same consistency of plastic and the same coloring has lab. That's what that is. Yeah. So I don't know, but I, it's kind of fun to see people out doing charity work. And I want to yeah. say just shout out to LA Ghostbusters one more time. Cause that was a fun weekend to go hang out with them for a bit, but yeah, I don't know. I want a trailer. I know I'm coming. I'd be bounced all over the place and I, this is why I'm like, I'm noticing things about proton packs and how they all look alike because I have nothing to talk about. It's new because I haven't yet received my trailer. So, yeah, my. I guess this might be a fun thing to do pre trailer. A, what is something that you want to see in the movie, just generally speaking, and B, what is something you want to see in the trailer? OK, um, this is weird because you asked me and that's not usually how podcasting works. Well, this is my so, show now. I've slowly oh, okay. absorbed it away from you and now it's mine. Got it. 
So basically the technological failure is going to spread here next. And that's, <laughs> and then you get to be in charge of the show. Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, what do I want to see in the trailer? I'll go with that first. Um, I want to know not everything about who these characters are, but I would like to know who Patton Oswald and Kumail Nanjiani and James Acaster and uh, Emily Allen Lind, like who are all these people? Not, I don't want to like, I don't need their whole backstory, but are they good people? Are they bad people? Are they like people who work for Ghostbusters? Are they people who are working against Ghostbusters? Like who are these people in this particular story would be a nice thing to kind of know. I don't want to know the whole story because it's just the trailer, but you know, give me a glimpse of Kumail yeah. in character. Like, let me see what these new characters look like and let me start thinking about them because right now I'm just like, what's Pat Oswald going to do in this thing? Um, will he be like his character from agents of shield? Does yeah. he have a twin brother? <laughs> um, <laughs> like, I, you know, I mean, just, I don't know. I want to know who, like kind of what those characters are. Um, and then, I don't know. I think in the movie, I want to see, um, I want to see more. I, don't, I imagine we will, cause we're gonna be in the firehouse, but I want to see more of like ghostbusters as an organization. Yeah. Like we didn't, we saw the family, right. But I want to now see like, what does, a contemporary Ghostbusters look like. Yeah. And are there weird tensions? Like I've said this since the beginning. And one of my favorite things about this movie, if they could do it with it, would be to introduce the tension between old and new, like these sort of old tech and new tech. And I've joked that like, I want there to be, and this is not something I expect to see in the movie at all. Like third act move, like first and second act, Winston and, and Ray have to have a falling out because Winston wants to convert all the cars to electric. Cause it doesn't make <laughs> sense that they buy gas when they have all this extra extra nuclear power laying around. Yeah. And Ray is just like, no, we got to make sure we keep the old girl and the Ecto one running on gasoline. And they have some sort of falling out. And then at the end, like Ray shows up with some weird, like hybrid electric gas powered new generation Ecto. This is all nonsense, but I want that. I want that tension between old and new, like give okay. me some updated tech, but then also make it, you know, that we, that we want to keep the old stuff and have that weird, I don't know. Like it's, I don't think word I'm using is tension here, but conflict around what does the old organization do? And what are the new ways of an organization that's like now going to restart itself 30, 40 years after the fact, you know? So I don't know. That's the thing I would like to see explored. I'm sure that it won't be explored that much because that's boring. (laughs) (laughs) People like you want to see whether or not they move to a paperless office, Jim. I'm like, yes, (laughs) I want to know if Janine comes back and she had to be retrained on TurboTax in the cloud in order to do all her billing and stuff. She comes in and like her filing (laughs) cabinets are gone. She's like, where am I? Where is the?" And they're like, they're in here. And they're just pointing at like a little hard drive standing on her desk. And she's like, what do you mean? (laughs) She doesn't have a red phone anymore to answer that's like a rotary phone just, she just has just like a bluetooth a cell phone <laughs> yeah exactly it's like a headset she doesn't even have phone. just like pushes her just like no the phone's in there just like tap it once and then say call winston and she's like call winston and then it rings he's like hello and she's like no i didn't mean oh dang it no there you go there is the thing i want in the movie i want her i want someone to reach up to their ear like the avengers talking to the other avengers like, hey, oh, I'm talking to somebody else. I have no discernible earpiece or whatever. They just touch their ear and then they just say, oh, excuse me one second. Ghostbusters, what do you want? <laughs> like, and that's how they answer the phone using like little hidden earpieces. Honestly, I yeah. dude, like it's it's so funny like this in this kind of depending on what questions you have and, and what way the conversation goes, it dovetails into some stuff that has plays into like October and everything. But like there's a. I don't know if it would be called a genre, but like there's a a design sensibility called retro futurism. And it's the kind of thing that if you watch like anime in the 80s and 90s, like science fiction, Mm -hmm. cyberpunk anime, or even stuff like Blade Runner, where it's like, obviously it's depicting the future, but then by modern standards, it looks old school, but it's that sense of like, it still looks futuristic, but it looks old school. Like, I think it's like watching that, Star Trek. Yeah, it, I think there's a like 80s cyberpunk or like pre cyberpunk retro futurism or not retro futurism, but like, um, what's the term? Cassette futurism, cassette futurism. Mm-hmm. It's like that era of like 
we think cassette tapes are the pinnacle of technology. Right. How do we carry that technology forward? <laughs> like to right. me, that is Ghostbusters in the sense of like, where do we go from here design wise? It slots right into that. Like it fits so perfectly with that right. era of like, if the if we look at the 80s and early 90s as the pinnacle of technology and then try to figure out what it would look like if all we did was evolve that instead of like, you know, VHS is obsolete. Let's go to DVDs. Let's go to right. Blu-rays. Let's go to streaming. Like if what we you're just making me like, think of is RoboCop. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, like RoboCop that, is very much like all the hardware in the lab is like. They're loading up uh, tapes and stuff yeah. off the walls, it's, but clearly like, he's a cyborg, like right? And it's the future of fits perfectly into that of like it can be new and shiny and fresh off the assembly line, but it looks like all right. you've done is make a new version of a VHS tape. Like that's what should happen <laughs> with like the packs, the traps, the goggles, all that kind of stuff. Is it's like right. Winston takes over, he injects fresh money into it, but like Ray is the brains of this operation, or at least right. he's at the top of like the R and D division or whatever. And so when they sit down and they and Winston's like, Ray, we got we got a new team, we got new people, it's a new operation. I want to make sure we do this right. W like obviously we know that the gear we had does its job. I'm not telling you to reinvent the wheel, but we need to make sure that everything these new kids have is top of the line. Let's make it happen. And then Ray comes back and it's basically like if the proton pack <laughs> is a VHS tape, he's made like a newer, better VHS tape. He has a super hasn't, VHS tape. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't made a he hasn't made a DVD. He hasn't made a Blu-ray. He hasn't come right. up with like a USB you know, drive or anything. It's like. <laughs> I've made an even better VHS tape like that's right. Ghostbusters. Yeah, I see. But I want that. And then I want the tension with that of like the kids, like, you know, Phoebe <laughs> being like, why would you do that? Like, just why would you do it that way? That makes no sense. Like, what? Why would you even what is a cassette tape? Why would you that? Wait, we, we have to rewind of, this. That doesn't make any sense at all. I kind of like, like the idea <laughs> of like the base. I mean, and maybe this is how the conflict gets resolved. Maybe like the base level of the technology is coming from like the adult. So it's like Ray and Winston and they have right. that sort of like it's cassette futurism. It's old school done in a new way. And then Phoebe's just like, why wouldn't you just, you know, do the do do the proton pack version of like a USB drive or streaming or whatever. Right. And yep. then Ray's just like, because this is how I know how to work. And it's like, do you want to like the tension is there. And then the solution ends up being like, what if you have this retro or cassette futurism and you have a VHS tape, but then there's like a USB, you know, port in it. And so right. that way, it's like, that's the part <laughs> that Phoebe adds where it's just like, you know how in, in the real Ghostbusters, they used to have moments where they're just like, oh, no, we've got to reverse the polarity or we've got to do some kind of modification to the, the proton thrower. And they'd like open up the body of the thrower and like have almost what looked like a little floppy disk that they'd put in there as if that was or like a like some sort of circuit board or something that they would put in there right. to, to modify it in whatever way they needed yep. to imagine. Now it, it looks like this cassette futurism, old school, but shiny and new VHS tape of a proton gun. But then they open up the body of it, open up the little hatch. And Phoebe is able to like connect a USB drive in there and immediately like look at her, connect it to her phone or some sort of thing and run an analysis and be like, oh no, we've got to, the, the power is not transferring from one thing to another successfully. We've got to crank up the voltage like that. It's that kind of thing, you know? Hey, look, I'm going to be totally fine with this whole USB plan, especially if it turns out that the USB stick they use for all those diagnostics is the little My Little Pony rainbow dash <laughs> usb stick i can afterlife dude i can a thousand percent <laughs> imagine it being something like that where like ray builds new proton packs and they're very like you know they've got a certain vibe to them and then the, everybody goes out in the field and they're like i don't know how to use this stuff this isn't made for people under the age of 20 or or of <laughs> 50 or you know whatever i ruined that yeah. joke, but you know what i'm saying and uh and so then like Ray finally like comes to rescue them in the field or something because he's like, how is this hard for you? It's so easy to use. I built it to be very user friendly. And he comes out there and they're just like, oh, don't worry. We figured it out. 
and Ray's like, what do you mean you figured it out? And then podcast is like, look, and he holds it up. And it's got like the My Little Pony Drive jammed in it. And it's got like, you know, two other like auxiliary cables coming out. And it's like, what have you done to my masterpiece? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I would love to see some goofy stuff that was kind of, you know, played with the old tech versus new tech dichotomy. Yeah, um, you know, sure. and what is the identity of a ghost busting team look like when it's a bunch of old people and a bunch of young people. And you know? even and but. even then, when you talk about like Ray comes up with the best thing Ray can make, and then the kids by the end of it get to add their own little flourishes to make it more user friendly for them because they are the ones who are in the field most of the time now. That still lends to a very Ghostbusters aesthetic of like it's made from a bunch of different stuff, but it works. Right. Yep. Agreed. So what do you want to see in the trailer then? And what do you want to see in the movie? Honestly, like before you even said what you wanted to see in the trailer, I was like, I want it to be like that affirmation of like, like we've had four origin movies now, like Ghostbusters was an origin movie. Ghostbusters two was five years later. They're out of business. They have to go back into business. Answer the call was an origin movie. Afterlife was, oh, yeah, we stopped ghost busting in the 90s and now like we're all coming back together. So just that satisfaction of like sitting down and watching a Ghostbusters trailer for a Ghostbusters movie where we're jumping in and it's like we're back in business. I don't need them to specifically say like every single tiny thing like reference every single thing that happened in like spirits unleashed because that wouldn't make any sense right but i think no just the general idea like i could totally see it being like oh it's canon but it's not it's not something that matters i could imagine it being like all the characters that were in spirits Unle- unleashed kind of being like interns that like were there for a little while and then they moved on to another job or moved on with their life or whatever Like what I don't want to happen is for Firehouse to start and it just immediately overrides Spirits Unleashed because it starts from like the first day of the Firehouse being open again. I would love for it to just jump straight into like the a little while back. There was those videos of them filming the Ecto one in New York and it's just like speeding back and forth. And I think there was a scene where like you could see they were filming where there were people like in the streets and they were like looking one way and then like they hear the ecto coming from the other way and then they turn around and like get out of the way just in time for it to like zoom past them and i was mm-hmm. telling austin imagine if that's like the first trailer is just it opens up it's like a normal afternoon normal day whatever in new york city people are crossing the streets and then some like gnarly ghostly whatever they they were chasing in those scenes they were filming just like flies by them, splats them with slime, and they're just like, what the? And before they can even fully recover, they start hearing, and it's just getting closer, and they're like, and they turn around, and you just see, like, the blue light, like, closing in on their face, and then, right past them, and it just immediately lets you know, like, oh, yeah, this is a Ghostbusters movie, and it just drops you into that status quo of, like, we're back, we're doing stuff, we're busting ghosts, there's like, we're going to hit the ground running. Like we're, we're like just full force. And like, there's no, there's no origin story. There's no build up. Like, yeah, it's just, we're in it. And Ghostbusters is here. It's kind of funny. Like what you're talking about is being excited about just being like back in New York. But what's odd about that is that the vast majority of what we will watch was not at all filmed there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was filmed somewhere designed to look like New York. Well, and the nice thing, I think what's interesting about that and and going back to the discussion we were having about like, what is the movie going to be called? The fact that like, we know they shot some stuff in New York, but the fact that so much of it was filmed on the soundstage in the firehouse that they built from scratch. It's like, oh, what is this movie going to be about? Like, we know it's going to be about Ghostbusters back in New York and then um in in doing something, right? Assuming mm-hmm. I'm assuming that at least a couple of the new cast members are going to be Ghostbusters, like additional Ghostbusters. Yeah. And you know, the all the characters from Afterlife are going to be back. So it's just like what is this story other than like, hey, we're back doing the thing with a couple new people. 
I guess it, this is maybe something that I want to see in the trailers, like start to tease. What is this movie about? Like, don't just show me a montage of like, here's this person, this person, this person, people you recognize. Here's the firehouse. Here's a shot of New right. York. And then just end it on Ray being like, so are you all ready to do this? And then just like cut to the <laughs> logo. And it's like, okay, you've, you've established that like we're back in New York. Here's some characters. And Dan Aykroyd is there. Like, that's great. And I'm not going to go see that teaser in a movie theater and be like, oh, man, I hate this. Like, I'll be no. excited for it. But I want something that just kind of like gives you a little tease of the narrative of the story. Right. Like, give me Ray in Ray's a cult, you know, talking to Winston. And Winston's just like, I think things are going pretty well for our first day or, you know, for our first year back in business or whatever. Right. Right. And then have Ray just be like, I don't know, I got that feeling. And Winston be like, Ray, you know, I don't like it when you get that feeling. It's been a long time since you had that feeling. And he's like, no, 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 the other one. And then, it, it, but he's <laughs> alluding to like, it feels like at least back in the day, they could only go so long before some other like big other shoe dropped and they had to deal with some sort of like end of the world crisis. And so then you start hear hearing ray like reading from some book that he had in his bookshop and and winston being like i don't know if that's like there are so many things that could happen but what's important is like we're back up and running we're doing it right we got these new kids who seem really eager to get after it i think we're gonna be okay and he and then have ray say something like maybe the point of calling it firehouse is the threat comes within the firehouse the calls are coming from inside right. the house and then have it end on some ominous note where Ray's like, we're so focused on looking everywhere else that the threat might come, you know, right from underneath us. And just allude to the the idea that, like, there's a reason that the movie is called Firehouse or something. And that, yeah. that'll be it. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it. I hope we get to see the trailer soon. It's going to be the thing to be hyped about. 